In this video, I will show you how you can control your Elgato key light with your loop deck. We will take a look at the key lights API, communicating with the light using JavaScript and then making everything work in the loop deck software. It's not very difficult to do, but you need some basic understanding of HTTP requests, JSON, uh, and a little bit of JavaScript. Yes, we will be doing some coding, but nothing too crazy. Note that Loop Deck provide a C Sharp SDK, but we don't need that for some simple controls. Let's start with the key light. It connects to your Wi-Fi and therefore has a local IP address assigned to it. And it exposes a very simple API over HTTP that we can use to query and control its state. Let's try it out. First, we need the IP address. That's easy. Just open the Elgato Control Center open the lights options and here we go that's the internal ip of my light yours will of course be different now we can start experimenting with the api you can use your favorite tool for testing http requests like postman or even curl for very simple tests i like to use the http client built into intellij idea since that's the ide i work with all day anyway let me know in the comments which tool you prefer. The first call we will try is a GET request to this address. So we have the IP, port 9123, and then the path is slash Elgato slash lights. Execute the request. The light is answering with a JSON response body showing that it is currently on with a certain brightness and a certain color temperature value. This is exciting. We are successfully communicating with the Elgato key light. Uh, how can we control it? Let's try and switch it off first. All we have to do is send a put request to the same address with the exact same JSON that we just received and set the on property to zero. Send the put and now it is very dark in here. Now let me switch it back on. So I set it to on and maybe do 25% brightness. Send this put request and we're back. The brightness values are between 0 and 100%. But what are the correct values for the temperature? That is easy to find out with the Elgato Control Center. All I have to do is set the temperature to the warmest setting and send the GET request. And what do I get? I get a color temperature of 344. Okay, now I set it to the coldest execute the get request again and i get a color temperature of 143 strange values but good to know i figured out what the settings are that i use for recording tutorials i set on to one brightness to 55 and color temperature to 196 send the put request and we're back to normal hello let's conduct a little survey if you didn't know until a few minutes ago that the Elgato Keylight has this awesome API, then post this emoji in a comment. On to the next step. In order to make this work in the loop deck, we have to put all of this into a program that we can execute on a button push. Here I have tried using curl in a bash script, execute it in git bash. It works fine. However, parsing or modifying JSON is a bit cumbersome in bash scripts. In JavaScript, however, it is very easy to send HTTP requests and to work with JSON. So let's do that. How can we execute JavaScript on our local machine, not in a browser? Well, there are several ways to do that, but my favorite is using Deno. Deno is a JavaScript runtime. You only need the Deno executable, put it somewhere on your system and execute it to run any JavaScript or TypeScript file. It is super easy and also very, very fast. But let's write the JavaScript code first. I'm going to keep this code as short and simple as possible without any error handling. First, I'm fetching the URL and parsing the result into a const JSON. By the way, yes, this top level await works in Dino. Let's also log out what we get. I'm going to pull json.lights at index zero out into its own constant. So I can simply go light.on is zero. And then I will fetch the same URL, but this time I need to put a request body of type application JSON and stringify the now modified JSON object. I also log out the result of this put request. Now let's run this with Dino. Dino.exe run elgado.js. And Dino says that it cannot perform network calls, so we have to add allownet. That is one of the security features of Dino. 
that worked and it is now dark again. So let there be light. One, save, execute, and here we go. Notice how easy this script is and how fast Dino starts up and executes it. Pretty nice. I want to improve this a little bit though. We can apply command line arguments to our JavaScript using Dino.args. It's a simple array, so if I do something like this, I can now call the script with an on or off or b100 and so on. I can also put my preset for recording tutorials in here. Call it tut with on one, brightness 55 and temperature 196. And when I call Elgado JS tut, I'm all set. Now compared to the bash script, this makes it also very easy to change the brightness and temperature incrementally because with the first get request, we read the current values from the light and can do something like this to add or subtract some value and also clamp the values to the ranges we determined earlier. So if I call this now with T plus, several times the light is now much warmer. So let's go back to my default settings. Here we go. All right, second problem solved. If you're following along and you can now control your Elgato key light from your command line, congratulations. Have you used Dino before? Let me know by posting a dinosaur comment and maybe a few words about what type of Dino project you made. By the way, my name is Chris and I make free tutorials here on YouTube. My channel is mostly about the open source software Blender, but if you would like to see more content like this, about coding, smart home, 3D printing maybe, then write a nice little note in the comment. And if you enjoyed this video so far, I would kindly ask to hit the thumbs up button right now. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much. Last but not least, let's call our script from loop deck. In the loop deck software, we can add a new run action, give it a name, and then enter the path to the program we want to execute right here. For some reason, even though I set it to English, most of the UI here is still in German, probably because my Windows 11 is German. However, the loop deck software is a bit dumb here and doesn't support command line arguments. So we cannot simply take our Dino command and paste it in here. We have to wrap it into a batch file first. If anyone from loop deck is watching, please improve this. Okay, let's create an elgado.bat file and put our call to Dino in there. Now we have to put the arguments we wish to send to our JavaScript in here. Off, for example. Save it. Pick this batch file here in the loop deck software. Uh, let me rename this to off because that's what we're doing. Save it. Now let's try it. Push the button and the lights are off. Now this looks like we need a separate batch file for every command we want to send to the light. That is of course a possibility, but there is another way. We can have just one batch file and simply forward all command line arguments to our JavaScript with percent star. Now we can create a Windows shortcut to that batch file. Right click on the batch file, more options, create shortcut. I'm sorry that my system is in German, but I'm sure you know what you need to do. I renamed the shortcut to keylight on. I can now edit the properties of this shortcut, put the parameters I need in here. So this one should send the on command and click OK to save it. I copy the shortcut, call it keylight off, edit the properties to send the off command. And now we can edit the action in loop deck. So elgato off should now call the link that we called keylight off dot l n k as in link. Save it, copy this. Create a new action here, execute, call it Elgato on. Same thing, but we're gonna use our keylight on shortcut that we created. And now I have two buttons to switch the Elgato keylight on and off from my loop deck. Is this super easy? No, but it's not very hard. And now we have the perfect foundation to do even more with our loop deck. For example, I can change the brightness and temperature of the Elgato key light with these loop deck dials. 
If you want a tutorial on how I got that to work quite nicely and without any windows flickering on screen, write dials in a comment right now. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. What else can we do with this? My smart home hub also exposes an API over HTTP that lets me query and control every single device on my smart home. That LED strip back there, for example, is Zigbee based and I can switch it on and off and control its color from a loop deck workspace. If you're interested in a tutorial on that, comment smart home down below and of course, boop the subscribe button. Please like the video if you learned something new today. Thank you for watching, talk to you later.